Yo, what's up you guys? It's KSC TV here and today's video is Plague Wars and I'm actually quite happy with this uh, game and let me explain. Today's video is we're gonna do a full review of basically of what I went through when I started playing this game. I want to thank the devs for gifting your boy a key to play their game. This is a RPG real-time strategy game developed by Reverie Reverie, Reverie, I don't know how you pronounce it, World Studios. And if you like MMOs and RPGs of any types, and I do reviews and guides and gameplays and even game updates as well, then this is the channel for you guys. Then please like the video and subscribe. Help your brother out for that road to 250 subscribers. I was trapped up in my mind, I was my own slave. I thought these problems go away when you get so paid. So let's just jump right into the meat and potatoes of this game, the gameplay. So one thing that stood out to me during my blind playthrough of this is that this game is very true to the real-time strategy style of games even older and modern games. Now, Plague Wars has only two modes currently, which is campaign and skirmish, which the campaign is basically a story mode as your character is a small lord, and it's your job as a player to conquer all of Europe while avoiding the Black Death, which is basically a pandemic that is sweeping across Europe very quickly and it's killing a lot of people fast. And you have, on the other hand of the game, is Skirmish, which is a multiplayer mode to allow you to battle other players or to practice your battles against the AI. Sadly though, the multiplayer wasn't working in my case, that it actually caused my game to crash in the middle of me even loading into Skirmish. So I'm going to give you guys basically a full review of my blind playthrough of the campaign. I got about the first 45 minutes worth of gameplay footage. You guys will be seeing how it is in the background. So let me give you a little lore of this game. It's 1347, the time of the Hundred Years War, and you, as the player, take on a role of one of 200 minor lords or kings from that time period. Be it uh, the Ottoman Empire, the Ottoman's court, well, the Ottoman's court, an Earl in Ireland or the Emperor of Byzantium, and you will rewrite history by fighting to preserve your empire and prevent the spread of the Black Death across Europe. You bear the burden of leadership and you must decide how to keep your people safe. Act swiftly using diplomacy or military might, but do not hesitate or the consequences will be dire. History has shown the critical importance of sound leadership in times of great crisis, even as we face these dangers as we speak. So here's one thing about this specific genre of an RTS RPG type. The Plague Kingdom Wars is basically the first ever historical strategy game to feature a full scale pandemic as well as the optional undead mode, which we will cover later with millions of infected and undead potentially roaming the world map. Gameplay is ever evolving from lordship or kingdom management to fighting a pandemic or even stopping an undead apocalypse. So somehow, some way, zombies got involved as well. So let's touch on the specific Black Death Plague that is actually the gameplay mechanic that is also going to harm you other than armies. It sweeps through the empire. The Black Death can actually work in your favor or it can harm you. So using primitive medieval medicine, quarantine your cities, cut trades with distant lands, whatever it takes to stem the tide of death. Almost kind of like what's going on in real life a little bit here. So you do have the option to like, if you put it away, you can stop working with certain things just to make sure that your people don't get infected. But sadly, the truth is you can't save everyone. Millions of people across Europe will get infected and die, and very soon it's the human resources and not silver coins that will become the most sparse resource. So the battles? Battles are truly epic, which I've actually lost my first battle that I attempted. Didn't realize that they were with me, they were allies, I didn't know that. 
one thing for sure is that the tutorial didn't really express like who's an enemy and who's a friend. Like I was very confused in playing the game. I do wish the devs were to reiterate or make an update where it explains to you a guide on like who's their enemy. Like it will tell you, like it will give you a monthly type of fill that yeah, these people chose to have war with you and you chose to war with them, but it didn't really, I would, you feel it kind of a little bit lost. That's why I feel like the devs can come in and refix it, give it an update, and it will be better. There are several thousand units on all sides of the battles. There's a lot of units across the world map to begin with. Bloody sieges, pitched field battles, and naval warfare unfolds with brutal historical realism and survival elements. When the battle is won, you loot the corpse and you take part towns to replenish your much needed resources. Now let's focus on the map. The entirety of Greater Europe and beyond is your playground. From the Sultanates of North Africa to Byzantium, the Russian states and the Golden Horde, which I'm already beefing with the Golden Horde because they chose they chose to make war with me, and I chose to be part of the Benzitium Empire, and all the kingdoms of the Western and Central Europe. You can start the game as a minor noble with a small demesne or as a king ruling a great nation. There are a dozen of kingdoms for you to choose from, and over 300 lords and kings who will rule whose role you can play. From the makers of Medieval Kingdom Wars, the, the plague upon success of Medieval Kingdom Wars and takes things further. As this game will enter into early access, however, almost everything has been redone from the ground up, and the gameplay has completely changed. Only some of the art and level assets remain for now. Which is a greatly expanded world map and new playing mechanics are just the beginning. With hundreds of new lords to play as and many new nations and cities to conquer and control. So remember that empire we were talking about? Well, let's touch on that for a little bit right here. You are allowed to build cities and you build hamlets, engage in trade with other countries, help the economy, work on your diplomacy, and in this time of great conflict in Europe, partake in almost non-stop warfare, from epic sieges to naval combat and bloody field battles. The towns, however, you do have the freedom to manage everything up close and personal by entering towns in RTS mode, while constructing buildings and walls and positioning your troops at the same time, you can also manage everything on the world map. Last but not least, which I actually didn't get a chance to see, but I'm pretty sure there is a clip out of here, but there is an optional undead mode, which basically millions of infected will soon turn into an even deadlier plague, which basically means zombies, and they will destroy everything in place. So you, you can isolate yourself to one land, or you can attempt to unite Europe through diplomacy as you try to stop thousands of undead at your castle walls gameplay and lore of the game there's only two modes right now i had fun trying to craft my benzitium empire for the first 45 minutes once again i do want to say thank you devs for gifting me a key it means a lot i would love to work with you guys in the future any other developers that see this video i'm, I'm right here i'm just a dm away come back Come talk to your boy Chaos. Well, Outcasts, it's been good. It's been your boy Chaos DTV signing out. Peace. I don't want to break down. I've been losing faith now. I've been in my mind getting used to the pain now. No one else to blame. And it's all on my own. I don't think I'll change. This is all that.